now we will see about the second physio uh, physiographic division of india the, uh, that is indo gangetic planes we also sometimes call this as indo gangetic and brahmaputra plane also because the brahmaputra river also forms a plane in the uh, northeast india and also in the west bengal region right good morning students welcome back to plutus is right today is our 36th day uh, we have successfully com completed 35 topics right so today we are i mean this top today we are going to start the geography subject also right so till now we have completed three subjects those are uh, we have completed recently science and technology and before that we have completed environment and before that the first part quality also we have completed right we have completed three subjects uh, today we are going to start the geography and in that uh, very very important topic and also it's my favorite topic that is physical features of india right uh, this topic is also very important from the point of view of examination so try to focus and again as much information as possible right so basically india is known as as you all know it is known as a subcontinent subcontinent why because it has all the we can say characteristics or features it has all the characteristics sticks that are required to be i mean that will that generally will be present in a continent Right. If we see the uh, physical features, if we see the, we can say, topography, if we see the culture, if we see the societies, we, uh, I mean, we can also see different races of people, uh, many number of languages are being spoken, there are different uh, types of cultures are there, so different, uh, different type of, we can say, uh, landscapes are there, so <coughs> there are many regional differences also. So what are all the characteristics that can be seen in a continent that all of them are present in India. However, India is not a separate land, land mass. So it is connected to the major Eurasian plate. So because of this reason, it, ha it has all the features that are that uh, uh, we can see in a continent however it is a, not a separate land mass it is connected with the larger eurasian we can say uh, land mass or we can say tectonic plate so because of this reason india is being called as the indian subcontinent so generally we when we say the indian subcontinent so uh, some of the other countries like sri lanka nepal bhutan and also some i um, mean parts of the afghanistan pakistan and bangladesh so when we take all these countries india is known as the subcontinent indian subcontinent so there are there are many char characteristics that are that can be seen in a continent most important of them is the physical features physical features so india has diverse physical features that can be seen that can be noticed in a continent so because of the reason india is known as a uh, subcontinent right so in today's class we will understand those physical features what are the physical features that are present in india right so these uh, simple things you know it is bordered by sea, sea waters uh, uh, on three sides and the mountains young himalayan mountains on the northern side so the country exhibits a lot of a vast diversity in physical and structural features also evolving over geological time right so if we see the broader divisions of india so broadly if we see india can be divided uh, into three main physical divisions those are the himalayan mountain system we also call them as the great himalayas the next one is indo gangetic plains we can say it is one of the largest uh, plain systems in india and the third one is uh, peninsular plateau so broadly if we see 
India can be divided into these three major, we can say, uh, physical uh, categories, right? So if we understand the geological significance of India, or for that for that matter, these three physical, uh, we can say, uh, physical divisions. If we see the geological significance, these uh, divisions correspond to the three main structural, uh, structural or tectonic divisions of India. Uh, constituting Peninsular India, Indo-Gangetic Plains and the Himalayan Mountain System. Right. So if we see the rock wise, age wise, age of the rock wise. So the Himalayan region, it comprises mostly of younger rocks. So uh, those are formed in Phanerozoic, right. That they are structurally deformed due to the Indian plate subducting beneath the Asia or for that matter, Eurasian plate. Eurasian plate. Right. So when we compare uh, the peninsular India uh, peninsular plate uh, with the Himalayan plate, so it is primarily composed of older rocks of pre-Cambrian uh, pre age. Right. So basically, the Himalayas are basically known as the young fold mountains. So basically, uh, relatively, they have the uh, younger rocks. Uh, when it comes to peninsular plateau, it is primarily having older rocks. If we understand the detailed division, so the I mean India can be divided into five physical groups. Five physical groups. Those are Himalayan mountain system. So it is comprised. I mean it uh, located in the northernmost region, consisting of lofty folded mountains, the young fold mountains, the young Himalayan mountains. Next is Indo-Gangetic plains. So these are flat plains. The gradient is very less. We will understand about the gradient in the later part of the lecture. So they are flat and uh, flat plains formed by sediment deposits from major river systems. So the rivers uh, that are originating in the Himalayas or <coughs> uh, for that matter, the trans Himalayas. So the debris or the sediments uh, that are brought by the these uh, Himalayan rivers, they are deposited. Uh, they are deposited. So because of that deposition, the Indo-Gangetic plains have been formed. Right. Next is Peninsular Plateau. So it is the central region. Basically, it, it is in the triangular shape. So broadly, we can say it is in the triangular shape. So it is the central region characterized by elevated plates and the hills, elevated plateaus and the hills, predominantly composed of older rocks. Next one is Indian Desert. We also call it as the Thar Desert. Right. Thar Desert. So this is the fourth physiographic division. <coughs> it is ar arid region in the northwest, uh, predominantly located in Rajasthan and primarily encompassing the Thar Desert. Next are the uh, last uh, phys physical, physiological division. It is coastal regions. They are surrounding, uh, these are surrounding areas bordering the Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean. They are characterized by diverse coastal ecosystems. Right. So these are the five detailed physi physiological divisions of India. Now, in this class, we are going to study uh, in detail about each of these physiological divisions. Right. So in the map, you can see the five physiological divisions, right? So this part, this is the uh, uh, the great uh, Himalayas, the young fold mountains. So basically some part of it is located in Nepal and Bhutan also. So some Himalaya, some part of the Himalayas are also located in Tibetan, uh, Tibet, sorry. So the uh, region that is located in yellow color. So it is the great plains the Indo we can or we can say the Indo Gangetic Plains right so those are plains located uh, especially I mean <coughs> depicted in yellow color the region that is look uh, I mean depicted in uh, green color is that it is Indian <coughs> plateau or we can say peninsular plateau peninsular plateau 
right next uh, it is i mean this uh, region it is located i mean uh, depicted in brown color it is the the great indian desert or the indian desert uh, otherwise known as the thar desert also next are the coastal regions or we can say coastal plains also so these uh, uh, i mean areas which are located in the blue color they are coastal regions right so generally the eastern ghats and the western ghats that are depicted in red color they separate the peninsular plateau from the <coughs> coastal regions right so if you see the ncert books the islands basically the lakshadweep lakshadweep and uh, the andaman and the nicobar islands so these have been uh, i mean classified as the sixth physiological division of india uh, some books have we can say classified them also they have i mean some books have depicted them as a separate grouping we can consider it as a separate grouping and we can also study them the islands those are the lakshadweep islands and the andaman and nicobar islands right so these are the major physiological divisions of india now we will understand about the himalayan system right it is one of the longest mountain ranges uh, mountain chains globally not only in india or not only in india but in globally they are the one of the longest mountain chains in the uh, in the world extending over 2500 kilometers from pamir nod in the west to mishmi hill mishmi hills in the east so here you can see in the map so they are extended here pamir nod or pamir plateau to the mishmi hills uh, sorry here uh, the those are lo located in Arunap arunachal pradesh so they are extended there so the we can say length of the himalayas is approximately 2500 km again they are further extended into the northeastern region we also known it as uh, we also call them as purvanchal himalayas so we can say they are uh, spread extensively they are one of the longest mountain ranges in the world right so it contains some of the highest peaks globally as you all know the uh, highest peak in the world everest it is located in himalayas only so including mount everest the tallest peak its uh, height is 8848 meter meters from the uh, i mean the level of the ocean right so this range has arcuate shape so try to remember the shape also this range has the arcuate shape right curving to the south uh, uh, i mean with uh, i mean with a width ranging from 150 to 400 kilometers so length is approximately 2500 kilometers when it comes to the width so it is ranging from 400 kilometers to 150 kilometers so in the western side uh, in the western side if we see so here the width is higher so it's like approximately 400 kilometers when we come to the east side uh, the width uh, somewhat reduces and it is at average 150 kilometers right so notable features include two major knee bends are there one is at the west side so here you can see one uh, knee bend here on the west side similarly on the eastward side also you can see another knee bend so basically it has two knee bends they also known as the syntaxical bends at one is at the nangaprabha and uh, another is at the namcha barwa so one knee bend is at the western side uh, in the i mean in, in the beginning of the west side next bend is at the eastern side next bend is at the eastern side at the nanga prabhat right Geo uh, geological distribution if you see so they span across india pakistan nepal bhutan and tibet so these are the countries uh, uh, i mean along across all these countries the himalayan mountains have been spread so it encompasses a chain of parallel mountain ranges so remember this is not a single chain of mountain so parallel many parallel range of mountains are there many parallel ranges are existing right so each of them have distinct characteristics right 
so if we see the topographical division so the himalayas can be divided into five parallel ranges so some books divide them into only three parallel ranges but this uh, this source it is dividing the himalayan ranges into five parallel ranges from uh, north to south separated by the each of the range is separated by deep valleys and plateaus so we will also see the deep valleys and the deep plateaus uh, which are dividing these we can say different ranges right so first uh, topographical division is trans himalaya right so trans himalaya is uh, himalaya is in the map you can see right so this region is known as the trans himalaya so when we come far from the north to south we can say it is the first range we notice or we witness right so this region is the trans himalaya right so if you see the location so northern ladakh uh, i mean northern uh, ladakh that is part of the jammu and kashmir and the north uh, northern most pakistan so in these two regions this uh, trans himalaya are located so it is also known as the tibet himalaya because major part of these himalayas are located in the tibet in the tibet right so if we see the smaller regions in these mountains so kohistan shok and uh, karakoram regions are there so if we see the shok uh, region the river shok also emerges from here right so karakoram region so here india's highest peak k2 is located in this region right so so height ranges from its height uh, ranges from we can say 3000 to 6000 meters uh, from the sea level we can say it is the second most highest uh, we can say range when it come when uh, compared to five uh, parallel ranges in the himalayas right this is the first region or we can say first range trans himalayan range next one is tethys himalaya so if you see in the map right uh, the uh, region located in the light blue color that is known as the tethys himalaya so right in india if you see uh, major part of the jammu and kashmir and also uttarakhand and himachal pradesh are located in this region right tethys himalaya so northern most region extends par partially into the tibetan plateau so northern most region uh, of this mountain tethys himalaya it extends partly into the tibetan plateau it also known as the tethys domain or tethian himalayan zone right so the consists of a plateau region over 300 meters in height sloping gently northwards so northwards so it has a plateau which is located at the 3000 meters high from the level of the sea so it is sloping gently towards the northwards that means it is sloping towards the tibet tibet or china right so it is composed of sedimentary rocks of various ages right this is about the tethys himalaya right next the most important one is the greater himalaya greater himalaya we also call it as the himadri himadri is the sanskrit name greater himalaya is the english name right so it lies south to the tethys himalaya tethys himalaya we have seen so it lies south south to the uh, tethys himalaya it lies south to the tethys himalaya it is the highest part of the himalayas so it has height ranges from 6000 to 8000 meters so it contains peaks that are ranging from height is ranging from 6000 to 8000 meters including the mount everest we have seen 8848 uh, is its uh, is the height of the mount everest it has also many other peaks right so it is perpetually snow covered which means the peaks or the mountain these uh, himadri mountain ranges they are always covered in snow always covered in snow right so because of this reason only i mean 
also the amount of ice ice is very vast so because of this reason the himalayas the greater himalaya is also often known as the third pole of the world or third pole of the earth so because this is i mean the himalayas are being called uh, in this way because the amount of ice they are holding right so because of i mean they are snow covered perpetually and they constitute the watershed for most of the himalayan rivers so majority of the himalayan rivers uh, except to few rivers three uh, except to three rivers are there indus sutlej and brahmaputra so most of the other rivers they are emerging from this region only the himadri region himadri region right so they are the source of the water basically the many of the glaciers are located in this uh, region glaciers are located in this region so when the ice is melting i when the ice melts the glaciers are formed so basically the glaciers are they are the water bodies in the high high mountains so these uh, they are the they holding the water so basically the rivers emerge from these glaciers so in this way the himadri uh, range it is a source of water for many of the rivers so the if we see the sub ranges in this mountain janskar ladakh and karakoram are the main mountain ranges in the greater himalaya so this region is made up of a deformed metamorphic rocks right so these are some of the aspects about the greater himalaya or himadri next one is uh, lesser himalaya we also call it as himachal right lesser himalaya or himachal so it lies to the south of the greater himalaya right if you see it in the map so this region uh right this region which is located to the south of the uh, greater himalaya uh <coughs> basically which is in the gray color that is known as the uh sorry <coughs> which is located uh, which is marked as the light gray color in the light gray color it is known as the uh, we can say himachal or lesser himalaya it is also located parallel to the greater himalaya so when we see the height if we see the height it is substantially less than the uh, greater himalayas so greater himalayas has some peaks that are uh, which which height is around 6000 to 8000 meters so if you see the average height or range of the height of this lesser himalaya so it is 1000 to 2500 meters right some of the ranges that are located in lesser himalaya are peer panjal range dauladhar range nagtibba range and mahabharat range so these are the some of the ranges that are located in the lesser himalaya so if we see the structure or the rocks of the this region so complex structure with superimposed thrust sheets they are mainly composed of pre cambrian metamorphic rocks so this region is compre- i mean is composed of these rocks pre cambrian pre cambrian uh, metamorphic rocks right the next one is or we can say the last physiographic division when it comes to himalaya is the outer himalaya we also call them as shivalik right so to try to remember these alternative names also we don't know which names will uh, the examiner will use so try to remember are familiar with the all the types of names right so these are the southernmost parts of the himalayas uh, they comprises of low hills less than 1000 meters height so they merge with the indo gangetic plains uh, next immediately next to these we can say uh, these uh, <coughs> uh lesser himalayas or uh, sorry how outer himalayas the indo gangetic plains are uh, located so there will uh, there will be terai region so the terai region will act as a bridge between the we can say outer himalaya and the indo gangetic plains so whatever the rivers that are flowing they submerge or they we can say 
they go underground in this uh, terra region i means they that means they temporarily disappear forming the we can say wet uh, wetlands here so after some time after a little bit of distance they again reemerge and they start flowing they will deposit whatever the alluvium or sediment uh, they are carrying by forming the indogangetic plates so this is the <coughs> uh, important information about the uh, outer himalaya so it is a predominant range uh, mainly composed of cenozoic sedimentary rocks right so this is the some of the information about the five uh, we can say uh, segments of the himalayan range right so if we see the sectional divide so if we uh, see according to the directions we can also divide the himalaya into some parts so basically we can uh, uh, divide himalaya into six major parts if we see sectional wise i mean based on the direction we can say so they are kashmir himalayas they are uh, located in kashmir himachal himalaya himachal pradesh and uttarakhand <coughs> sorry himachal pradesh uh, kumon uh, garhwal himalaya so majorly these are also located in uh, himachal and uh, uttarakhand region next uh, nepal himalaya located in nepal bhutan himalaya located in bhutan assam and uh, arunachal himalayas they are uh, majorly located in the northeastern states of uh, uh majorly assam and arunachal pradesh so some books says that the himalayas further extend into the northeastern region so here meghalaya is there so himalayas extend here similarly here nagaland and mizoram are there so himalayas will also extend into these two states also apart from arunachal pradesh and assam himalayas so the we can say extension of the himalayas is a differing uh, from books to books however uh, try to be familiar with all these differences also so basically the ncert books say that himalayas will further extend into and they will uh, take a bend and they further extend into nagaland and uh, mizoram and uh, mizoram and also uh, to this side the meghalaya so here we can find the uh, chirapunji region which is part of the himalayas so it is the highest rainfall receiving region in the world right so here only here the kasi garo and uh, mikhai uh, these three ranges are located in the meghalaya himalayas right so if you see the sectional wise division this is the sec sectional wise division of the himalayas right now we will see so this is the we can say depiction of the five ranges of himalayas so the light green color located this is the out this is uh, they are depicting that part is depicting the outer himalayas himalayas right now we will see about the second physio uh, physiographic division of india the, uh, that is indo gangetic plains we also sometimes call this as indo gangetic and brahmaputra plain also because the brahmaputra river also forms plain in the uh, northeast india and also in the west bengal region right so it can be called as indo gangetic plain or indo, indo gangetic and brahmaputra brahmaputra plain right so indo indo gangetic plain it forms a major part of the north and northeastern india lying to the south of the himalayan arc right these plains are formed by sediments that are deposited deposited by the rivers that are flowing from the himalayan mountains so the major uh, major rivers are indus ganges brahmaputra along with their uh, tributaries are there like yamuna is there satluj is there so there are many rivers so all these rivers are bringing the sediments and they are depositing so because of this deposition only the indo gangetic plains are being formed so major i mean majority of these river, uh, rivers are formed during the or we can say the indo gangetic plains are formed during the holocene times i mean they are very recent when we come to the deccan plateau or peninsular plateau right so these uh, plains cover several states including punjab haryana uttar pradesh uh, uttarakhand 
జార్ఖండ్ బీహార్ వెస్ట్ బెంగాల్ అస్సాం అండ్ పార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఈవెన్ పార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ రాజస్థాన్ ఆల్సో సో దీస్ గ్రేట్ ప్లేన్స్ ఆర్ కవరింగ్ ఫిసి ది జియోగ్రాఫికల్ జియోగ్రాఫికల్ ఫీచర్స్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ గ్రేట్ ప్లేన్స్ సో దే దే ఆర్ ట్రావెల్స్డ్ బై రివర్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇండస్ గ్యాంజ గంగా సిస్టమ్స్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఈస్ట్ టు వెస్ట్ సారీ సో ది ఇండస్ సిస్టమ్ ఐ మీన్ ది దిస్ రివర్ ఈస్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఈస్ట్ టు వెస్ట్ అవెవర్ ది గ్యాంజ సిస్టమ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ వీ కెన్ సే ది నార్త్ వెస్ట్ టు సౌత్ ఈస్ట్ రీజియన్ సో ది ఇండస్ రివర్ అండ్ ది గ్యాంజటెక్ సిస్టమ్ బేసికలీ దే హ్యావ్ డిఫరెంట్ డైరెక్షన్స్ సో ఇండస్ ఈస్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ వీ కెన్ సే ఈస్ట్ టు వెస్ట్ అండ్ ది గ్యాంజస్ ఈజ్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ వీ కెన్ సే ఇన్ ఏ డిఫరెంట్ డైరెక్షన్ రైట్ ద రివర్స్ ఐ మీన్ ద రివర్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇండస్ సిస్టమ్ ఫ్లో సౌత్ వెస్ట్ టు సౌత్ వెస్ట్ ఇన్ సౌత్ వెస్ట్ డైరెక్షన్ ఇన్ టు ద అరేబియన్ సీ వైల్ దోస్ ఆఫ్ ది గంగా సిస్టమ్ దే ఫ్లో సౌత్ ఈస్ట్ టు సౌత్ ఈస్ట్ ఇన్ టు ది బే ఆఫ్ బెంగాల్ రైట్ సో ది ఆరావలి మౌంటైన్స్ దట్ ఆర్ లొకేటెడ్ వీ కెన్ సే ద ఆరోవల్లి మౌంటైన్ చే చైన్ దట్ విల్ యాక్ట్ యాజ్ ఎ బ్యారియర్ బిట్వీన్ ద టూ రివర్ సిస్టమ్ ద ఇండస్ రివర్ సిస్టమ్ అండ్ ది గంగా రివర్ సిస్టమ్ దే విల్ ఇట్ యాక్ట్స్ యాజ్ ఎ వీ కెన్ సే వాటర్ డివైడ్ వాటర్ డివైడ్ బిట్వీన్ ది టూ ఐ మీన్ వీ కెన్ సే టూ వాటర్ సిస్టమ్స్ ది ఇండర్ ఇండస్ రివర్ సిస్టమ్ అండ్ ది గ్యాంజస్ రివర్ సిస్టమ్ right so basically the aravalli mountain it extends from gujarat through rajasthan up to the delhi right so mount abu with the within the aravalli range so it reaches at the height of 1722 meters at guru shikar so in aravalli hills the guru shikar is the highest peak guru shikar is the highest peak right so this is about the geogra- geographical features of the yes uh indo ganges plains if you see the topography so indo gangetic plains are characterized by flat terrain primarily composing of alluvial alluvial sediments with deposits i mean with depths not exceeding 2000 meters so if you see the depth it is not exceeding more than 2000 meters which means they are very young the uh, we can say the great uh, the indo gangetic plains are very young so they are formed in the recent holocene phase or age right so this is this region is uh, well known for fertility i mean uh, crops are uh, grown we can say in two seasons right making it uh, the most agriculturally productive areas in the country not only in the country if we see all over the world also it is one of the most fertile regions we can say plain systems not only in india but also in the world so because of this region only uh, this region only we can see one of the highest population densities highest population densities in the indo indo gangetic plains right so two crops are grown here generally so it is one of the most fertile regions of not only in india but also in the world so here in the image you can see the indo gangetic plains or we can also call it as the indo gangetic and brahmaputra plains so some of the plain here uh, that is formed by the brahmaputra river is also part of it right if you see the boundaries to the south the plates are bounded by the vindhyan mountain ranges so here in the especially in the madhya pradesh the vindhyan ranges are there they act as the southern border for the great indian plains to the southeast they are bordered by the satpura mountains we will also study about these mountains uh, in the same lecture <coughs> right so to the south east region they are bordered by the satpura mountains with separate <coughs> which separate them from the peninsular part of the india so to the northern side we have already seen the himalayan mountains are located right so here you can say the western border the uh, i mean the indian indian desert is located 
or we can call it as the thar desert also so to the western side the indian desert is located right so the third part the third impo- important physiographic division of india is the peninsular plateau or the dakkan we also call it as the dakkan plateau right so the peninsular plateau it is a triangular area so broadly it can be said as it is a triangular region <coughs> enclosed by low mountain ranges so to the northwards the west i mean in this direction also and in this direction also they it is bordered by mountain regions so here vindhya and the satpura ranges are there here this border it is covered by western ghats western ghats or we also call them as sahyadris here it is i mean bordered by the eastern ghats right so these are the borders of india so in the north it is bounded by vindhyan hills and the northeast by satpura chain so the plateau comprises of low mountains and the plateaus with varying elevations right so this is the boundaries and uh, characteristics of peninsular plateau right if you see the major mountain regions in the peninsular plateau region first one is the vindhya hills so they extend from gujarat to bihar so average elevation ranges between 5, 500 to 600 meters <coughs> with some peaks uh, reaching up to 9, 900 meters they are characterized by low mountains and plateaus <coughs> apart uh, apart from vindhyans uh, the <coughs> other mountain region that is located in uh, we can say in the peninsular plateau is satpura range so it is a short chain with peaks higher than vindhyan range so when compared to vindhyan region the length of the satpura mountains is less but if you see the height the height of the satpura range is more than that of the vindhyan range so some uh, at some parts the height of the satpura ranges is reaching to 1000 meters notable peak is here the highest peak is pachmari peak so it is around 1335 meters so we have also seen the pachmari uh, pachmari national park the national park when we were studying the uh, national parks or we were studying about the wildlife so wildlife pachmari wildlife sanctuary is also there so that particular national park or wildlife sanctuary it is located in this region only right next are the western ghats so these are a continuous chain of hills extending from south of the gujarat till the state of kerala so our average height is 1000 meters with the highest peak that is anaimudi it is 2693 meters it is located in kerala so when we come from north to south the height of the uh, we can say western ghats it is increasing height of the western ghats is increasing when we when we come from north to southern direction right so it continues west uh, it constitutes a watershed for major rivers like godavari krishna kaveri and many other rivers are emerging from the western ghats right so some of their uh, rivers flow west side also some of the rivers are flowing west side also and some of the regions generally the longer rivers those are flowing we can say in eastern direction so in south india in north india the aravalli this acts as a water divide between the indus uh, indus river system and the ganges river system so in when it comes to peninsular region or southern india so it uh, the western ghats they act as a water divide between the west flowing rivers that are flowing into the arabian sea and the eastern flowing rivers that are flowing into the bay of bengal right so the western ghats they act as a water divide when we when it comes to the peninsular plateau or southern india the aravalli mountains they act as water divide in the northern india right right if we see about the eastern ghats so they are detached hills so because while the western ghats are continuous and only few passes are located in the western ghats 
the eastern ghats are they are broken we can say broken chain of hills because the eastern flowing rivers rivers like krishna godavari and kaveri i mean not kaveri krishna and godavari they have we can say broken this chain of mountain they have broken the chain and they have we can say created deep uh, valleys or we can say deep uh, plains in this mountain so these uh, these are detached hills because they are detached by the east flowing rivers like godavari krishna mahanadi etc right they are detached hills extending from odisha to tamil nadu right so the maximum elevation is around 1500 at the mahendragiri mahendragiri in odisha so basically <coughs> so the highest peak is uh, located uh, in the odisha that is mahendragiri so it is also known as purvadri joining the western uh, western ghats at the himachal uh, sorry nilgiri hills so the western ghats and the eastern ghats they are joining if you see this is the uh, entire coast so the western ghats and the eastern ghats are they are joining at the nilgiri that joining place is known as nilgiri so when we were studying the environment subject we have seen national parks and also we were when we were studying about the threatened species etc we have discussed ex- extensively about the nilgiri hills also so the western ghats and the eastern ghats are being joined at the uh, nilgiri hills so the nilgiri hills are joining the western ghats and eastern ghats right so this is some information about the uh, plateau the peninsular plateau right so these are the important mountain Uh, mountains that are contained in the uh, peninsular plateau now we will understand apart from uh, these uh, mountains and the we will also see the all the mountain ranges all the important mountain ranges that are located in india and the their peaks the highest levels of them we will understand here itself right so here we have seen the karakoram range it is uh, the highest peak is k2 it is we can say the highest peak it is located in india so at present it is uh, it is in the park occupied kashmir so if there is a question about the highest peak in india don't confuse so the indian con- government still ca- cons- i mean considers this k2 uh, as the highest peak in india so whenever there is a question uh, try to mark this option if we see in the entire uh, Himala- himalayas or in the world the highest peak is the everest it is located in nepal so when it comes to india the highest peak is k2 right next one is we, uh, in aravalli hills we have seen the mount uh, abu at the guru shikar guru shikar that is uh, located i mean the location is mount abu so it is the highest peak right if you see the vindhyan uh, <coughs> vindhyan range uh, sadbhavana shikara it is the highest peak so if you see the satpura range uh drupad uh, drupad peak is there right so these are the michael ranges <coughs> these are the kaimur ranges and uh, here if you see in assam the nokrek is the highest uh, place in the we can say assam himalayas so these are basically uh, these ranges are known as patkai ranges so here dafda hills are we can say dafda hills and uh, peak dafda is located in arunachal pradesh so mount saramati is there in nagaland so that is the highest peak in nagaland himalayas so if we see in the maha mahadev hills so pachmari <coughs> pachmari is the highest place and uh, here in the <coughs> uh, we can say western ghats it is the dudabetta and uh, sorry in the nilgiri hills the highest peak is dudabetta and in the western ghats the highest peak is annai mudi right so here <coughs> the highest peak in uh, i mean eastern ghats is jaduguda some books say it as the mahendragiri also mahendragiri that is located in odisha right so these are the some of the himalayas uh, sorry some of the mount- mountains that are located in india and their peaks the highest places of those uh, we can say the mountains so try to be aware of the location of the mountains so there may be a question 
about these regions also right so here kumon range is there uh, maikal range is there mahadev hills are there satpura range vindhyan range right balaghat range is also there satmalai satmalai range is there so it is part and parcel of the western ghats so try to remember all the mountains that are located in india if you understand the geological significance of the uh, peninsular plateau it forms the india shield because the i mean the plateau region the peninsular plateau region it is con- constant for many uh, we can say millions of years billions of years whereas the northern part the greater plains region including the himalayan part that is still active techno techno uh, i mean tectonically active however the peninsular plateau is tectonically stable area comprising crystalline and igneous and metamorphic rocks rocks from the pre cambrian age so basically it is tectonically stable area or stable region because of this region it is uh, known as the we can say india shield right so the indian shield or the peninsular plateau region it consists of five arcanian blocks those are darwar so basically this region is located uh, in the karnataka region and parts of andhra pradesh and tamil nadu also next is bastar region so it is found in central india especially in chatisgarh uh, next is singbum ka uh, craton it is located in jharkhand next is bundelkhand craton it is northernmost part of the madhya pradesh and uh, also located in some parts of the uttar pradesh next one is aravalli craton craton it is separated from bundelkhand by vindhyan basin uh, right so these are the five cratons that are located or part and uh, or part and parcel of the we can say peninsular plateau region So here in the image you can see this is the Aravalli Craton, this is the Bundelkhand Bundelkhand Craton, right? This is the Bastar Craton, and this is we can say the Darwar Craton, and the next one is the last one is Singbom Craton, right? So this is located in Jharkhand region. Singbom Craton is located in the Jharkhand region, right? so there are uh, some uh, mobile or uh, fold wells are there so these uh, these mobile or fold wells they are separating the arcadian cratons the five arcadian arcadian uh, cratons we have studied so some mobile belts are there they are dividing the arcadian cratons so the main mobile belts are eastern ghat mobile belt so here you can see the eastern ghat mobile belt pandian mobile belt so it is uh, it is located southernmost part of india pandian mobile belt next is satpura mobile belt so here it is the satpura mobile belt next is aravalli mobile belt so this is the aravalli mobile belt next is chota nagpur singbhum mobile belt so this is singbhum <coughs> sorry this region is the this region is the chota nagpur singbhum mobile belt so these are the some of the uh, mobile belts other mobile belts are also, uh, are also there so these five are the major mobile belts that are located in the peninsular plateau right next important we can say the fourth uh, important physiological division of india that is the indian desert or the thar desert so if we see the location uh, of the thar desert so it occupies a significant area on the north western margin uh, margin of Uh, of the peninsular india lying to the west of the aravalli mountain chains so here aravalli mountains are located in this area so they are lying westwards to the <coughs> aravalli mountain regions so when we study the formation of this uh, we can say the thar desert the monsoon or under the location of the aravalli ranges plays an important role uh, for the formation of the thar desert so basically the we can say eastern branch of the monsoon winds when it come the aravalli we can say prevents these uh, we can say eastward branch from entering the uh, this this part so because of this reason the rainfall do not occur so when it comes to the western branch the aravalli are located in parallel to the 
we can say the direction of the western uh, westward branch of the southwestern monsoon so because of these two reasons this area is uh, de uh, devoid of the rainfall so because of this region it uh, we can say converted into a desert area or arid area so it is believed to have been under the sea during the mesozoic era so in the mesozoic era it was under the ocean right so the onset of the pleistoic epoch marked the major climatic change from humid to arid condition so in the pleistocene age so it is emerged from under the water and it became uh, from uh, we can say the humid to it become an arid region arid region right so this climatic shift occurring approximately 2.6 million years ago uh, to 11700 years ago led to the desertification of this particular region so these are the location and the geological history of the thar desert so topography we see the desert sand covers substantial area of the western rajasthan so the main topography consists consists of sand dunes so sand dunes are the major topography here right so shape, uh, they are shaping the landscape of the region so this uh, region also extends some parts of the uh, desert also extends into the pakistan right if you see the geological composition so beneath the desert sand lie sedimentary rocks uh, of the mesozoic and the cenozoic age these uh, sedimentary formations contribute to the geological diversity of the region right if you see the environmental conditions and the climate of this region so the thar desert experiences extreme arid conditions arid means dry conditions with the minimal rainfall we can say the rainfall is uh, rainfall is less than uh, 25 cm so the rainfall is less than 25 cm so temperatures can vary significantly with the scorching heat during the day and uh, cooler nights so because the i mean because of the presence of the sand so this uh, uh, fastly absorbs the heat and also it will raise the heat in the same way i mean with the same speed so because of this region this reason the range of temperature is very high range of temperature is very high both we can say annual temperature annual range of temperature and also the daily temperature range are very high right if you see the human settlements and adaptation so despite challenging environment the desert is inhabited by various communities adapted to desert life nomadic tribes such as rabari and bhil they are traditionally rely on livestock herding and uh, seasonal migration patterns settlements in the deserts often rely on water sources such as wells and oases for sustenance so these are the some of the aspects about the thar deserts next the last region or the fifth region of india is the coastal regions of india right so india it boasts a long coastline stretching over 5700 km as you all know so india has vast coastline right so they are primarily coastal regions are primarily located beyond the western and eastern ghats including the saurashtra coast of gujarat and including the bengal coast right if you see the west coastal region so it lies along the arabian sea extending from the rana of kutch in the gujarat to the kanyakumari in the south so the rana of kutch is a depressed area i mean it is a low area submerged under the sea during the high tide so when high tide is there it will be submerged under the sea and it becomes an estuary during the monsoon estuary means the whatever the waters uh, sea water is there so it comes in uh, into the land area so in this way it becomes the estuary estuary during the monsoon region monsoon season due, due to the excess water excess water right and also and in winters it is being exposed in winters and uh, summers it is being exposed right if we see the we can say uh, this coast the western coast is also a 
submerging coast submerging coast so because of this reason we can say the land area between the western ghats and the arabian sea is very less or we can say the width is very less width is very less so there are some rivers are also they uh, there which are flowing or emerging from the western ghats and flowing in the towards the west coastal region but the width of the river uh, the length of the rivers is also very less because the we can say gradient is also very high in this region so because of this reason the deltas are absent here deltas are absent right if you see the eastern coast region so it lies along the bay of bengal extending from ganges delta in the north to kanyakumari in the south so it is broader when compared to the western ghats characterized by low lying areas where sediments from ghats are deposed so basically uh, the deltas famous deltas uh, are formed uh, by the rivers of godavari and also krishna and also kaveri river is there so all these rivers major rivers the eastern flowing rivers they all are forming deltas here right so because of this reason also the eastern ghats region is a very fertile region fertile region it is also a fertile region similar to that of the we can say ganga yamuna or uh, indus uh, in, in uh, indo ganga plains this region is also a very fertile right so this is a we can say depositional features are there like deltas of mahanadi krishna kaveri and also godavari so we can say it is and it has an emerging coast emerging coast due, due to the depositional activity of the rivers right so because of this reason the coastal region eastern coast uh, eastern coast region is uh, we can say wider when we compare it to the western coast of india right if we see the geological features the eastern coast region mainly comprises of deltas and the depositional landforms due to rivers from the western ghats flowing east eastwards into the bay of bengal region right so it has few erosional landforms also but they are confined to andhra pradesh coastline only right specific features if you see so in the image you can see this is the we can say western coast and this is the eastern coast region they are meeting at the kanyakumari so this region is known as coromandel coast and this uh, region this coastal region is known as the northern sarkars and uh, <coughs> this region is known as utkal plain right here also uh, try to remember this parts of the coastal regions so the end point that is known as malabar coast uh, it is also known as the uh, kerala coast and uh, the border basically the goa and karnataka region that coastal region is known as konkan coast and the uh, the saurashtra region it is known as the kathiawar coast and the <coughs> kutch region it is uh, the coastal area it is known as kutch coast right so these are the eastern and western coasts coasts of india so if you see the specific features of these regions so the coastal regions uh, of uh, eastern odisha and bengal they are rich in lagoons and lakes so we have seen chilika lake also and we have seen when we were studying the environment uh, environment part we have seen the mangroves also so sundarbans we have seen they are comprised uh, they are located in west bengal and bangladesh so other i mean especially the kutch region kutch region and uh, andhra pradesh the chilika uh, region also the mangroves are located so the eastern odisha and bengal are rich in lagoons and lakes in addition to the major deltaic region of the ganga river system right so no significant uh, erosional landforms are located here with sundarbans estuary submerged like the ran of kutch during the monsoon season so ran of kutch region so you see it is basically will be submerged during the monsoon season right so sundarbans the mangroves are located in the west bengal and bangladesh so they are the some of the specific features of these coastal regions so this is some information about the 
physical features of India. Right. So this is very, uh, this is a very very important topic uh, from the point of view of examination. I hope you have gained some knowledge, some inf important information through this lecture. Right. Now we will see uh, some previous uh, years questions that are being asked from this uh, this topic. Right. First question. It is asked in 2023. Right. The question is consider the following statements. Right. The statements are Amarkandak Hills. Uh, are at the confluence of Vindhya and the Sahyadri ranges. So here you can simply eliminate uh, this uh, statement because there is no confluence of Vindhya and uh, Sahyadri. Uh, I mean, right. So you, you can eliminate uh, the statement we have seen. So there is no confluence, uh, confluence of Vindhyan and uh, Sahyadri ranges. And also, Amarkandak hills are not located either. <coughs> in either of these mountain ranges so this statement is incorrect next is uh, biligiri rangan hills constitute the eastern moats parts of the satpura range so this statement uh, statement is also incorrect so these biligiri rangan hills are they are not the easternmost part of the satpura range next is seshachalam hills constitute the southernmost parts of the western Guards. So this is also incorrect statements. So the Anaimudi uh, region of Kerala, I mean the Anaimudi that is located in the Kerala, it constitutes the southernmost part of the Western Guards. So basically, Seisachalam Hills they are part of the Eastern Guards. Eastern Guards, and they basically they are located in the Andhra Pradesh region. Andhra Pradesh region. So this statement is also incorrect. So the correct option is option D none of the above statements are correct so these type of questions can be asked in the examination so try to be thorough with the all the hills or mountains that are located in india along with the respective states in which they are located right next question is uh, it is asked in 2022 uh, the statement is i mean there is a peak uh, there is a peak matching uh, the peak and their respective mountains right the question is considered the following pace so first column is about peaks and second column is about the respective mountain so namcha barwa garwal himalaya nanda devi kumon himalaya no Creek, sikkim himalaya so here namcha barwa <coughs> namcha barwa is located to the eastward basically it is located in arunachal pradesh so this is a incorrect we can say pain so garwal himalayas basically they are located in the western side of himalayas in the uttarakhand and himachal uh, in the states of uttarakhand and himachal so the first pair is incorrect uh, the second pair is correct nanda devi is located in the kumon himalaya so basically it is the region of uttarakhand and we can say some parts are also located in the Nepal. So Nanda Devi is located in Kumon region of Himalayas. Next is No Creek, Sikkim Himalaya. So this is also uh, incorrect statement. No Creek is basically located in the Assam. Right. So this is also incorrect. So the question, which of the pairs given above is or are correctly matched? So uh, the pair only two is correctly matched. So the correct option is option B. Right. Right. These are some of the questions that are asked uh, previous in the previous examinations. So uh, this is all for today. Thank you. Thank you for joining the lecture. Uh, see you next time. Until then, have a good day. Right.